like to note that I think this image was actually shared with me by Sonosite. Um, it was because I can see their logo in the corner and just because the way this presentation has uploaded into the big screen, we're not seeing it. So I'd like to just um, credit this image here to Sonosite um, and thank them for kindly sharing this image with me. So when we look at the Linea Alva through ultrasound, I like to first of all look at it from through its length from sternum or through from xiphoid to pubis. So what that looks like is this. You can see as I move the probe, we're getting the visualization of what I'm seeing on the screen. And I'm simply going down, this is obviously on a male model and an intact linea alba. You can see where we went through the belly button there. We lost, it nearly looked like there was a hole in the linea alba. There isn't, that's just the belly button and the tissue that we have there. And you can see the thickness of the rectus abdominis here at the end. And what I would like you to note is the, the linea alba almost disappears when we come below the belly button on this uh, model and they talk about the kissing heads of the rectus abdominis and that's because they almost look like they automatically blend into each other um, I'm just going to play that again so as we're going down through the length we can see the rectus abdominis the rectus abdominis the linea alba here and this is the belly button, so it disappeared. We're going to pick up the rectus abdominis again here. And we're going to finish with the rectus abdominis. Nice big muscle bellies here. No real linea alba defined. It just blends to each other. And in terms of looking at indirect distance, we can see it here on the screen. I've got the yellow arrows outlining the width of the linea alba. Just at either side, you can see the symmetrical image or the mirror image of each um, rectus abdominis muscle belly. They're not all as an exact mirror image. You may have atrophy at one side, but it's just to be able to start orientating what we're seeing here in the screen. If you don't use ultrasound, don't worry if all you can see is black and white and shapes and you can't understand or make out what I'm talking about. Ultrasound and developing your awareness to see what is on the screen takes practice and learning and you really have to train your eyes you have to know your anatomy really well to be able to differentiate between structures and you need to know what you're expecting to see to then pick up on abnormalities as physiotherapists in pelvic health we are not diagnostic in our use of ultrasound imaging i'd like to highlight and make people aware of that um, i'm currently on a framework and a panel creating the first uh, scope of practice guidelines within the UK for use of ultrasound imaging. Um, so as pelvic health physiotherapist, I'm not diagnostic. In my use of ultrasound imaging, I can use it to supplement my assessment, which I'm doing here. Um, whereas other physiotherapists who have done their postgrad certification in ultrasound imaging are diagnostic. Um, so they're musculoskeletal sonographers, um, but there is a difference. We can also look at the same visualization and start to become more extensive in our anatomical mapping. So the rectus abdominis muscle bellies we're seeing here, linea alba, the anterior rectus sheath, so it comes up brighter or hyperechoic. The posterior rectus sheath again should come up hyperechoic and it should be it should envelope the posterior or deeper proportion of the rectus abdominis on each side. The transversalis fascia, which is deep to the posterior rectus sheath, subcutaneous fat. So that's the um, outlining of the more detailed anatomy. And as I say, in similar to do, similar to dissection or to surgery, unfortunately, when it comes to ultrasound imaging, we do not have nice differentiated color coding, and everything looks the same. And we have to start to be able to map out. You can look at, you can move off onto the rectus abdominis muscle bellies and have a look at them. And you can look at them at different lengths along the abdominal wall. You can take, that's, I'm just showing the outline of the rectus abdominis. You can take a measurement of the rectus abdominis muscle thickness and have that in record. You can see here that it's calculated a, di a distance or a thickness of 0.88 centimeters. And that's something that you can then implement a rehab program and come back to that exact same anatomical location to remeasure to see if there's been any hypertrophy and if we go to look at that tension so I talked a lot about the role of transverse abdominis involved in tensioning of the fascia in the abdominal wall we've spoke about how Diane Lee's research really identified um, 
the idea of a distortion index or the idea of being able to pretension the fascia and the connective tissue in the lineal but before we load it. So what we're doing here, I've just simply cued someone to do a pelvic floor contraction and when they do you see a tension in here. So it's going to happen again and you'll see this tissue tension and it's almost like the rectus abdominis muscles uh, lengthen laterally slightly so they pull laterally somewhat. I'm going to play that again so that you see. So when the point that we tension it is here, they're doing a pelvic floor cue, you see that area kind of tension, you see the linea alba almost flatten a little bit. It's going to happen again. There we go again. It's as subtle as that, but that's how you can start to see if someone's anatomy is communicating with each other. If by doing the pelvic floor recruitment, are they getting that co-contraction with transverse abdominis and is that resulting in the desired tensioning at this midline abdominal wall? I've outlined it a little bit and labelled it for easier detail. So you'll see when the tension, there's a lateral movement 